Hello. I want to talk about this round trip airplane problem. I mean, it's a pretty popular problem. I mean, it comes up every once in a while. And I just want to just go at this in so many different ways and just kind of like nail this problem down because I think it's kind of fun. There's a lot of fun things in the problem. So let's get started. I did take that picture. That's a picture of me. I take pictures of planes for some reason. Um, that's an airplane. Okay. So here's the problem. A plane flies round trip from point A to point B and then back. If there is a constant wind in the same direction, let's say, does it take longer or the same amount of time for the total trip? So, so I'm gonna show, let me show you this as a picture because I think it'll be, it'll be easier. Okay, so here's point A and here's point B and there's no wind. And so if I'm flying, which I can't fly, but if I, someone flies from A to B, they have some speed that way, there's no wind, right? And then they come back, there's no wind, so it takes some amount of time. Now, we're gonna take the same trip, but in this case, there is wind. So in this case, I'm gonna have wind going from A to B. So on the way there, you're gonna go faster, right? So it's gonna take less time. And on the way back, you're gonna go slower because you're going against the wind. And so the question is, how do these two times compare? Let's go. So let's start off with the idea of relative velocity. Um, and I'm going to use a simpler version of this, but let me start off with the correct version. So suppose that I have the velocity of the plane. It's a vector. I'm going to write it as a vector. We're not going to really use vectors because it's a one-dimensional problem. But in general, if I say the plane can go 200 kilometers per hour, then that's the velocity of the plane with respect to the air. That's this airspeed. So here I'm using P-A for plane with respect to the air. But the air is also moving. So the velocity, the air has some speed. Let's say it's, you know, 20 kilometers per hour. And so that's the velocity of the air with respect to the ground. So all these velocities have to be relative to something. So I put that in the label, right? And a lot of times in physics, we'll just have a standard reference and it's obvious what that is and no one cares. But in this case, it matters. Now, what if I want to find the velocity of the plane with respect to the ground? Because that point A and B are on the ground. So I need to know how fast it's moving with respect to the ground. So we'll call this the velocity of the plane with respect to the ground. And it's equal to the velocity of the plane with respect to the air plus the velocity of the air with respect to the ground. Now those are vectors, okay? So if you change directions, then you have to ch uh, change the X component of, of all that stuff. So let's imagine that if it's going back the other way, well then it'd be going slower because now the velocity, the two vectors are in opposite directions. So if we just limit this to the x direction, so it's a scalar value, we can make it a little bit simpler. So on the way there, I'm going with the wind, so I have the velocity of the plane. I'm just going to say velocity of the plane, but it's with respect to the air, plus the velocity of the wind, vw. And then on the way back, v2, I'm going to say that's negative vp plus vw. Okay, so before getting into the math, and trust me, I'm going to get into the math. Let's just, let's just logically think about this answer. Here's the logical answer. Uh, I will tell you the logical incorrect answer that still makes sense later. So here's the way I think of it. Okay, imagine point A and point B are 100 kilometers apart. And the plane can fly with an airspeed of 100 kilometers per hour. So if there is no wind, how long would the round trip take? Well, A to B would take an hour. Uh, B back to A would take an hour, so two hours. Okay, so that's the, the trip without air. Now, let's go extreme. What if there is a 100 kilometer per hour headwind? So going from A to B, you'd be going 200 kilometers, right? But if you come back, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to go. You could, there maybe is a way you could cheat, but in mathematically, now I have a 100 kilometer airspeed, 100 kilometer wind speed, the ground speed zero. So how long would that take? Infinity. Okay. So that would take, if I increase the airspeed, the wind speed enough, I never get back. So obviously infinity is longer than the, the trip without wind. So, and then we can imagine this variation from a little bit of wind to 100 kilometers per hour wind. And you can imagine that it's always going to take longer. That's my logical answer. I'm sticking with it. Okay, let's do this with some physics and some math. Okay, so here's a picture A to B. 
uh, I have a distance between them I'm going to call it is S. Uh, and so it's going to go on the way to point B, it's going to have a velocity V1. On the way back, it's going to have a velocity V2. Whether there's air or not, whether there's wind or not, doesn't matter. V1 is the velocity there, V2 is the velocity back. Now, just to make things a little bit simpler to mathematically deal with, I'm not going to go there and back. I'm actually going to go A to B and then B to A in the same direction. So let's just let's just stretch it out. So I go A to B, a distance to S, and then I keep going uh, B to A, a distance to S. But, but in this case, I have a velocity V1. I'm pointing backwards. And then I have a velocity V2. So it's two equal pieces with just different velocities. It's a little bit easier to deal with. And I think you can see that's the same thing as turning around going back. Okay, so let's look at the time it would take with no wind. So we define velocity as the change in position with respect to the change in time, delta x over delta t, in one dimension. And in this case, delta x is 2s, right? I, that's how far I'm going, going twice the, the distance s. And I'm going to say with no wind, my velocity is just the velocity of the plane, vp. And again, that's the velocity of the plane with respect to the ground. No, with respect to the air. And then v is the velocity with respect to the ground. So I left off those complicated labels because I don't really want to get... I don't know, I just did it. I just did it. So that would give us... If I solve this equation right here for t, delta t, I get delta t0 is <clears throat> delta x, which is 2s, divided by the velocity, which is just vp. So let's put some numbers in. If I use a distance of 100 kilometers, uh, an airspeed of 200 kilometers per hour, just so it makes work all nice, then I get a distance of 200 kilometers, a speed of 200 kilometers per hour, it takes one hour. That's, that's fine. So, but now we have a value that we can compare to. Now let's say that we have uh, wind. And again, I'm going to break this into two pieces. I can't just do one speed for the whole way. I have two different speeds. So the first speed, I'm going to add the wind speed, VW, plus the air speed. Now I can do the same thing with that V1. I can solve for time T1. This is the time on the way there. So it's going to be the distance, S, divided by the velocity, V, V1. And then if I put in for V1, VP plus VW. On the way back, it's going to be moving still in the same direction. See, so this is, makes it a little bit easier. So I have VP minus the wind speed because now they're going in the opposite directions. So that's V2. I can solve for time T2 the same way. It's just S over V2. S over VP minus VW. Now the total time is just going to be the sum of those two times. That's that. Okay. So it's different, you can see. Um, and we're going, to, we're going to simplify this to get a, more, a better answer. But just remember, no wind, 2S over VP. With wind, we get this expression. So let me show you that with any kind of wind, it's going to take longer. So here's my expression for the time that I just found. Now I have, I want to get a common denominator. So to get a common denominator, I have to multiply this left side by this thing right here, VP minus VW, and then I have to multiply this one by VP plus v, VW on top and bottom. So if I multiply the left side by VP minus VW divided by VP minus VW, that's one, right? So I can do that. Uh, and then I do the other side, I do it to the other term, VP plus VW over v, VPW. Now I just need to, now they're going to have a common denominator of VP plus VW times VP minus D, VW, but that's that's a, a, a square, right? So it's going to be VP squared minus, minus VW squared. And then I can just do the top part. So here I have the bottom part, VP squared minus VW squared. I skipped that step. Was that okay? Okay. And then on the top, I have S times this, and then I have plus S times that. So, uh, but I did get a common denominator. So here you see I have S times negative VW plus S times positive VW. Those two terms cancel. And then here I have SVP and plus SVP, so I get two of those. So the, the time is going to be 2SVP divided by VP squared minus VW squared. Now I want to get that in uh, a, a better form. So if I factor out VP squared on this bottom term, and then I'll cancel one of those VP squareds with this VP, I get this expression. So it looks more like this, right? 
So I have 2s over vp, same as over here, but then I have this other factor, 1 minus vw squared over vp squared. But this is going to be less than 1, always going to be less than 1, unless vw is 0, right? And that I get this term, which is good. You should always check that. <clears throat> so if this term is less than 1, then it's going to make delta t greater than delta t 0. Let's put in some values. I'm going to use a wind speed of 20 kilometers per hour. Uh, no, I, I, yes, 20. So here I have 2 times the distance s, and then I have the wind speed 200, uh, the air speed, and then 1 minus 20 squared over 200 squared. If you put that in, I get 1.01 hours. So not that much different, but longer. Okay. I mean, I was trying to do a realistic value, right? 20 kilometers per hour wind. That's still kind of fast, I guess. But Okay. So, that's the answer. It takes longer. But why is this a tough question? Why, why is it an interesting question? And it is an interesting question. I like it. Um, so, it's a tough question because here is a very common thought process that many people would have looking at this. They'd say, okay, 20 kilometer hour, kilometers per hour wind. So, if you have an airspeed of 200, one way you're going 220. Yes, that's true. The other way you're going 180. Yeah, that's true. So 220, 180, they average to 200. So it's the same as just doing no wind at all. That's the thought process, okay? But let's, let's see why that doesn't actually, why you can't average these velocities. So let's say we do try to do that. I wanna see if I just take V1 plus V2 over two. That's the average, right? So here's V1 plus V2. It's the distance S, which is the distance over some time delta t1 it's which is the time it takes to do the first part and then here's s divided by delta t2 and then i add those together and divide by two now to add those together i need a common denominator so i'm gonna i'm gonna fix that so i multiply this by t2 over t2 and this is t1 over t1 and then i get this if i fix it i'm gonna skip some math here I get S delta T2 plus S delta T1 over the product. Okay, that is not an average. That is not the average. Okay, and I'll show you again why it's not the average. But let's look at a slightly different problem. Here is a, a problem where you can average. So suppose a plane flies at 220 kilometers per hour for one hour. And then it flies 180 kilometers per hour for one hour. How far does it travel? Okay, in this case, you can use an average velocity of 200. So if I write this velocity as the sum of the distances, they're different distances, right? Because different speeds for the same amount of time, but they have the same time interval. So I can easily just combine the two times because we're dividing by the time. So that's going to be S, I can split that as S1 over 2 delta T plus S2 over 2 delta T. I can do that un-get un a common denominator, and that's just, this is just v, S1 over T delta T is V1, S2 over T delta T is V2. So I get V1 over 2 plus V2 over 2. That's the average. Okay, that is the average. So you can average the velocities if they're going for the same amount of time, but not if they're going for the same amount of distance. Okay, you know I'm going to make a Python thing for this. Let's do this in Python. So here's a little Python animation I made. So here's my, my point A, point B, and here's a wind speed. And so you can see the vector velocity of this as it, of the plane. That's my circular plane I made. This. Assume the plane is a sphere. Okay, it's a good physics joke right there. So here it goes, and it comes back. It's going slower. And then if I calculate the times, I get a time on the way there of 0.33 hours, on the way back 1.02 hours, uh, and then you add together, you get the total time. The theoretical time uses that equation I calculated before uh, for delta T, which was 2s over vp times one minus vw squared over vp squared, okay? So it works. Now, they're not exactly the same just because I have finite time intervals the way I did the motion. It's not a big deal though, okay? What if I plot, I think this next part's really good. What if I plot position versus time and imagine it's going in a straight line? Okay, I'm going back to that straight line version. So here's the first part of the trip with the wind. 
And you'll notice that the slope of this line is greater because it's faster. It's going with the wind. And it's going slower this part. But it goes the whole trip. That's the whole trip. But you'll notice that it does not go 220 kilometers, two, or let's say three, 300 kilometers per hour for half the time, right? This is the half, this is the, this is the half, this is the point B is right there. That's where it turned around. So it spends a lot less time going faster than it does going slower. That's why the average velocity is not 200. Okay, one more graph here. This is just to show you that uh, the time does in approach infinity as the wind speed increases. I thought it'd be fun to plot this. So this is the total trip time as a function of wind speed. So as you, if you have a zero wind speed, it takes an hour. We already did that. And then as you increase the wind speed, uh, this increases. If you plotted this up to 200, it would go to infinity, right? And that's just plotting that function shows that what I, my original logical answer was that if you, if you had uh, a zero ground speed, you'd never make it. So, so that's that. So that's that problem. Be careful about average velocities. Uh, don't just average things. Always think about the original definition of velocity as change in position over change in time and work from there and you can figure this problem out. So I, like, I still like the problem. I'm still going to use the problem. But that's my explanation.